If Murray had supported the show, I'd be less sick of podcasts. Yeah, there goes. The blubbity blah. The blubbity blah. Sending out good vibes. The blubbity blah. Good vibes. The blah. Good vibes. The blubbity blah. Good vibes. Good vibes. Underneath breaths of deep gratitude and prayers for guidance and protection. And put on a didgeridoo and shamanic drumming track. Shivers or vibrations and stuff like that. He was negotiating between the Israelis and Palestinians, and he said the worst violence he ever seen has been in families between husbands and wives and parents and children. That was worse than negotiating these feuds. Okay, guys, welcome back to the Grand America Show, back to fascist Canada. <laughs> uh, we're going to be tacked chatting with Alan Steinfeld a little bit later about uh, making contact and his mic was making contact with some sort of weird technical glitch (laughs) at times. It sounds like he's getting ready to do some rapping or some beatboxing, or it sounds like it's on a skip. I don't even know what's going on. Oh, you think it was an audio thing? Like, Oh yeah. I've never encountered it before, but there is a, there's a weird glitch that happens, you know, every couple of minutes. And the problem is we can't, I mean, it sort of seemed to get worse and then we ended it fairly fast. It's like letting the record skip. Yeah. But you can't really address it during the show or otherwise it's, it's kind of, you know, it's going to cause a two minute delay on troubleshooting and it's shit. Not terrible. So we just let it go. It's yeah. not terrible. There's yeah. like, you know, maybe, some of it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. This is, you know, like, I think there's like eight or nine spots where it happens yeah. and it lasts like a second. Yeah. But you'll notice it. You won't miss it. So how you been? Yeah, I'm in good. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back to, uh, to hell? Canada. Welcome to hell. I mean, honestly, dude, if I didn't have a job and kids and stuff, I would not be here. I would have just stayed. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Huh. I, well, you can't I, just stay. I mean, you got I other can. stuff and all nah, that. No, fuck the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's just stuff. You move in here. The studio. <laughs> you move in here and uh, I'll start remoting in. I'm back on America train, baby. Yeah, well, like I said, we flipped around. We flipped, God bless the we USA. Flipped, you know, that I for mean, a while there, Utah. the USA was nutty and Canada was free. And I was just in just... Idaho. I drove. So this is my Saturday night after the event, which I'll get to in a minute. But yeah. my Saturday night, I leave uh, Washington, drive into Idaho, um, drive past a music festival. In, yeah. a, in a tall, and then a little while longer, about half, not even, maybe maybe 10 minutes up the road, I drive by roller coasters and water parkers having a time at the Silverwood theme park. There's a, people yelling, screaming, carrying on. Then I drove by Bonner's Ferry. I actually stopped about stopping in at a casino for dinner because the parking <laughs> lot was packed. But I was late on my COVID test. So they say 72 hours. Yeah. And I was already at like 73 and a half. Oh, so I see. I, yeah. like, I just yeah. couldn't make it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I got to the border two hours late and back into Canada where everything was actually, that's not true. BC, it was the last night that, so I drove, when I drove through Fernie and Cranbrook, there was a lot of people on patios. The patios were very packed. And then, uh, by the time I came out of the pass in Crow's Nest, it was the weather, the weather was a shit. So I left Washington, it was fucking 28 degrees. Wow. I got home, it was minus two. Yeah, snowing all weekend. <laughs> snowing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, you know what? It's very much like driving in the future. Driving in the future. So what did you I wonder think if there's about? a ratio per kilometer how many days into the future I drove. It, was almost, it feels like time travel. I like drove from barren Calgary, where the grass is brown, the trees are not budding. And then slowly as I got over the mountain into the valley, things start greening up a bit. I get down into Idaho, down by Sandpoint. The trees are full bloom. By the time I get down over into Spokane Valley and stuff like that, there's fucking the flowers are in bloom. There's lilacs blooming everywhere. And then like all of Soap Lake is just extremely green. And, wow. And it's just. And then you come back and it slowly gets colder. Yeah. And there's yeah. less and less. First the flowers disappear. 
And then slowly the green starts I, disappearing. <laughs> and then by the time you get back over the mountain, there's not even leaves on the trees. It's I hate just, to break your missing time bubble, but that's just elevation and uh, latitude. Yeah, I know, but it's like time. <laughs> it's like time travel. <laughs> So what do you think is the what do you think is the rate per hundred kilometers south of days in the future at Calgary? I I really don't understand what you're talking about. I don't I don't get it. Well, because every like it's, every it's, like hundred kilometers I drive south is like an extra day in the future of spring. Yeah, I see what you mean. I like guess. when I was in Washington, it's It'd be a week. When I, in It'd Washington, be a week. it's July. Let's say a week. In a Washington, week. it's July. Right, a week. It's July, right? Now. A week per hundred kilometers. It was as hot as Washington as it could get. All summer. Yeah, here. that is weird. That is weird. 28 degrees. Too hot. To, yeah, but that's, yeah. see, that's abnormal though. I mean, usually Washington. No, it's at not. This time, yeah, it is. It's only, it's May. No, they, say, they say this is the best time of year for Washington oh, really? because it's been like two months. It's going to be scalding hot. Really? And everything will be brown again. It's not that hot. Because it's the Washington. desert there. So anyways, this is what the Washington people are telling. Yeah, yeah. Well, They're like you pick maybe. the best time of year to come in two months. It's going to be way too hot. Hmm. I like it hot like that. You like it hot? Was it cold out there like that night though? Or the one night it was got cold. It never got below like maybe 12 degrees Celsius. Hmm. Someone stole Cyrus's jacket with his truck keys in it. Stole it? Really? Yeah. From where? He left it hanging on the fence. Oh. So... He had to call his wife and tell him someone stole, and his work, and tell him that someone stole his jacket with his keys in it so he couldn't leave the Randall Carson event. <laughs> and they're both like, okay, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's why. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cyrus came out, had a blast. That's good. That was a great time, great group. Yeah. Great so group. we had contact at the cabin in the Scablands with Randall Carlson and yeah. Brothers of the Serpent. And Finally Dave met Madison. Kyle Delisle, who like is host, supports us on everything. Thanks, Kyle. He's hooked up. He came in my truck with me. We rolled around. Nice. Yeah. He's a full blooded Mohawk. So you guys, you guys went uh, like every day. You had an excursion out to oh yeah, dude. Like, I don't areas know. of the Scablands. I saw the Is pictures the and I can't Butte believe all the or whatever. Like the one where it's like barely clearly dumped into the Columbia. I mean, the landscape is just phenomenal. I didn't realize that Washington like until last few all years. over the place. Yeah, like I, well, I, have, I have the only part of it I've seen before is Dry Falls and that that run of it. Yeah, yeah. But we went to places that are just like, wow, amazing, amazing. So spots. everybody enjoyed it. And Randall was chit chatting with yeah. everybody. Yeah, and, he gave uh, us his moon presentation. Oh, did he really? Oh, I know. Dude. I was so jealous. Was it good? Yeah. Oh, dude. Dude. It's crazy. He was holding off on that for a while. It's crazy. And he did it. It's fucking. Well, crazy. give me some hints. Give me some, give me some, you know. Well, give me a sneak peek. Well, but, if, if you look to Osiris, start by looking to Osiris. He kind of entered the moon on the same day that Noah enters the ark. Really? Yeah. And the other thing that's interesting about the moon is all of the Im the biggest impact craters are all oh the biggest ones are all on the side that face the earth. And what does that mean? That it's getting I mean, maybe when the fucking bunch of rocks smashed into the earth it caused the younger Dryas. they hit the moon. They the, the ones time. that missed hit the moon would have yeah. hit that side of the moon, right? Because they're not on the other side. I remember side. when NASA went to the moon. Yeah. They have to constantly adjust their orbit because the near side of the moon seems to have weird dense deposits that cause gravitational anomalies. And then if you look, they just found a giant, what they call a giant plate of steel. Um, I actually thought I threw it in the thing. I'll see if I can find the actual article because it was... Uh, Oh, that's Union of the Unwanted. That's very different articles in there. Uh, da, da, uh, uh, say something. Yeah, I wish I could have went again, of course. But, you should have come, know, dude. Yeah. It was like, uh, it was a real exercise in normality. That's good. Yeah, meanwhile, uh, here we go. This explains a lot. The, the moon's largest crater has a chunk of metal embedded that's five times bigger than the big island of Hawaii. You think that could have been crushed, like smooshed down from the impact? <clears throat> There's another interesting thing where none of the craters on the moon are deeper than a certain depth. I don't oh, know what offhand. Wow, really, eh? Wow. But they don't meet the depth to width ratio that we normally see. Right. And there seems to be a very hard limit on how deep they will go. Because of the, because of the content of the surface? Like how met met metallic it is? Maybe there's know? some giant titanium shields. <laughs> like... Manufactured or natural? 
<laughs> if a if a if a civilization can move three hundred and five hundred ton stones around, yeah, yeah. What what book were you re- listening to yesterday? Who built the moon? Who built the moon? Who who wrote that? Is that an Christopher old book? Knight, I think. I, uh, I'm not sure who. Let me see. This is an older book. Yeah, I picked it up because uh, showed up to Tony Roberts, who's another big fan of the show. Who uh, awesome dude. Great time. We had a great time with him down there. Yeah, Christopher Knight and Alan Butler. Okay. So he had read it on his flight home and recommended it. So I grabbed it and started listening to it too. It's pretty, pretty neat. I was kind of in and out. I'll have to start it from the beginning again, just because it was like driving. I was getting phone calls, sort of just tired. The tired drive. The drive home is a very tired drive. You get very little sleep. Yeah. When you're up. T- to the last attendee yeah. and then yeah. out before all the attendees to make sure breakfast is rolling and yeah. stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it was a huge success. Everyone had a fantastic time. We're going back again in September. I'm going to post the pictures on the website soon, but the contact on the cabin website, I'll post them. We're going back in September. We did decide it was a day too short. I mean, the lodgings are amazing. They got the uh, mineral water bass in there. So you can either use a regular water or you can turn on the soap lake mineral water that's like got all the crazy healing minerals in it and stuff like that. Super nice accommodations. Very, very nice. Top so notch. So going back to the same spot. We're going back lake. to the same accommodations yeah. there in Soap Lake Resort. Yeah. We've added a day because we were getting back a bit late. Yeah. Action packed days. So we wanted to have an extra day so we could do more hanging out and jamming and partying and stuff like that. So we're gonna make it and it seems silly to leave on a Saturday when you got a Sunday. It does help with the travel, but we said, fuck it, we're going to add a day, so it'll be Monday to Sunday instead of Monday to Saturday. It's $2,592. bucks. It includes uh, your shuttles from the airport, all your transportation during the event, and all your food while you're there. And, um, yeah, we had a great time, and we're going to do it again. Right on. September 20th to 26th. We'll put a link to the year. show notes in that. We're getting Graham there one way or another this time. Yep. Even if you have to quarantine. Well, I do have some news, so we'll talk yeah, about it. Yeah, we'll get to we'll that. We do have some news, that'll but you got pre- some news, too. That'll be a prelude to that. What's my news? Your news. Well, so did we talk about you getting over the border and all that and how you did it? I used my treaty card to get there, These, okay. which was a pain. It took a while. Oh. Mainly because they've closed it down to one lane. Oh, it took a while to get So I have to, to be in that. the same line as all the transport trucks. Oh, wow. I, like, snaked out, like, six or seven transport trucks because I seen a gap, and I just, like, Yeah. And then I had to back in there, but Buddy was actually pretty cool. He stopped. He gets it. He's at work. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. So he let me like back in in front of him. So I was only like the fourth person or something like that. But as soon as I had it in my treaty card, he was just like, have a nice trip. It was the only time I've ever gone to the States and not been asked exactly where I was going, what I was doing, and how long I was going for. He did ask me if I was coming back. Yeah. He said, are you coming back? <laughs> I said, yes. And then when you came back, they asked you if you were coming back? No, on the way back. So on the way back, I drove by, like I said, I drove by the first the music thing. Yeah. Then the packed amusement park, which I thought about just going for a roller coaster ride. Like I really was trying to hang on to that freedom, man. I really, I really considered staying. Yeah. Cause I was, I was going to try and get in touch with Benny Wills, maybe go hang out and just like another night at dinner or, but it was mother's day and my mom's here. So. I had to get home. Um, but then I drive by the casino and then I get to the border and I roll down my window and he's like, can you put on a mask, please, sir? No way, really? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. Did you but say that? I, well, I'm saying it to myself in my truck while I'm getting a mask. Luckily I have masks in my center console when I'm with Natasha and stuff. We got to go into places. So I always had, it's always good to have a couple of masks around these days. I mean, I've succumbed to that. Yeah. Um, so I put on my mask. And then I gave him all my papers and uh, said I didn't have to quarantine. He asked me a couple of questions, what I was doing down there. So I was just working. Doing some, what kind of work were you doing? I said, I was like, because my card says field consultant. So I was like, I was just down there uh, looking at some potential job sites with future projects. I said, okay, well, I see no reason you show. And then he asked me if I bought anything. I told him what I bought. And I was like, okay, I see no reason uh, you should have to quarantine, Mr. Grimes. Have a nice night. Meanwhile, my, my Indian brother, Kyle, the lo- Kyle, Kyle D, is 
getting threatened with million dollar fines and no. three three years in prison if what? he breaks his quarantine. No. And yeah, that's I guess this is what they're telling him at the Vancouver airport. And then they take him to his hotel, his quarantine facility. Oh, it's just where the food is apparently terrible. Oh, I just I have a hard time. I think he got this. his negative results so he can fly back tonight. That's good. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. But yeah, and good. then I come back to Alberta where it's just everything's closed. And they're arresting pastors in the streets, like fucking goon squads. Yep. Well, everything's not closed. I mean, you can still hit your big box store and all that. I mean, I the corporations the are, are open, making actually. bank. I think yeah. all the stores are open, actually. Because yeah. I looked today to see if the used bookstore is you, open, and it is. You know what it is? I went in that store the other day. That's fair. <clears throat> they're double masking in there, yeah. Pretty crazy. They let Anyways, me get away with the, my face shield in there. The, uh, Did you have your face shield in there? Yeah. They didn't complain? No. Because they got some pretty no. aggressive signs. That's what I mean. Did oh, you yeah. go to the one in Inglewood? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So, what was I going to say? The, it's because the you're smiling. Is, That's you why. Know, it's like, how can I you know. not give it? How can you? How I can know. You not? People can see your face. I did have to wear uh, my spittle catcher at all of the dispensaries. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So. But they're not fucking around. They're like, dude, they're trying to shut us down for any fuck. The federal government's trying to shut us down for any fucking reason already. Yeah. We're sorry. Well, that's the problem. That's the problem I have with what's happening up here. So now they've really distinguished again in this new lockdown, the difference between uh, essential and not. So basically you're losing all your, like your hairdressers and all that. And all those personal services are getting shut down and some of the restaurants, I guess. Just services. And then that's it's the so, thing is at so least they, haven't, again, they just, haven't got into the stupid essential retail thing, which no. like Manitoba does, where you just like Cabela's isn't allowed to be open. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't make sense to me. On another level, that doesn't make sense either. Anyways, I don't want to get too too much into the the COVID stuff, but um, no, it was more of a do. fantastic trip. Yeah, we and should then, mention that there is a couple more of them. Yeah, that's, doing, that's why. I was so there's say. the one in September from the 20th to the 26th. This is going to be with Randall Carlson, Brandon Powell, and Dave Matheson. Throwing some Brandon Powell action in there. Uh, so that's this September. It's, uh, I'm telling you, it's a fantastic trip. Now that we've done it, the next one's going to be even better. Now that we'll iron out a few more details, we're going to knock the food out of the park next time. Uh, then we're back in February 10th to 13th, Lakeside or Pine Top Lakeside, Arizona, Magic on the Mountain with Brandon Powell, Owen Hunt, and Joe Roop, which is uh, contact at the cabin.com slash magic if you want to check that one out. And we're back in the can. There's only, so the candy ones, I don't even know if there's even point advertising it because like three of the people who were at Scablands bought tickets for canyons. Remember Matt, whose house we yep, uh, did yep, the podcast from? Yep. He, he, he was there again. So I got yep. to see him again. And now he is coming to Egypt for one. And he's coming to, after we met Dave, he's like, I got to come to the canyon thing. Okay. So you haven't come. even met, you haven't even mentioned. I haven't Egypt got there yet. yet. We'll so get let's, there. That's let's get to, the, get to the canyon. So the canyon one, there's one private room left. Well, when is this one for again? April 28th to May 2nd. Okay. So there's one February, private room April. left. Okay. One campsite left and one pullout coach okay. left. And that's it. And that's stuffed. Already stuffed. So here's a little teaser. If you're on the fence, Felix Ortega will be at this event. Wow. He's coming out. The jingle so king. that he can jingle king us up and play music with the snake bros. Oh and God. it's going to be a fantastic vibe. I would almost call Felix like an attraction at this thing. I mean, honestly, I'm super stoked to have him there with his, with his, with his guitar. It's going to be awesome. Imagine when Jane, when Felix meets the snake bros. Yeah. I mean, the jam session will be through the roof. And then mention the other one then. So, and then the next one on the books, I mean, there's, there's, Right now, also in the works, there's like a next fall Scablands in Montana, second half of that. But that aside, that's not solid yet. We are pretty solid on in the first half of November 2022. We are going to go to Egypt, contact at the cabin, goes to Giza with the Snake Bros. And we're going to go back there this time. And we're going to go with Randall Carlson, Dave Matheson. And Ben from Uncharted X, Ben's going to be the guy who's been to Egypt. He's the Egypt expert. He's got all the videos. You know, the guy blows my mind. This guy's going to take us around Egypt and show us what's up. Um, Dave Matheson's going to show us the stars under the desert sky, which Graham has assured me is phenomenal. It is. 
The whole Egypt is phenomenal. Dude. And the Going master up and down the Nile and the Valley of the Kings and all that. I mean, it's unbelievable. And the master builder, renegade scholar himself, Randall Carlson, will be going with us as well. I do have to say, if you want to go to Egypt and check out the pyramids and the Serapium and all that with Randall Carlson, there's probably one shot at doing it because Randall's got big plans of going to the Azores and he's got so, and he wants to do a cathedral tour. I mean, the chances he's going to get back to Egypt, I mean, we'll get back to Egypt, I'm sure with Ben, but the chances Randall will be there again are probably going to be pretty slim. Um, we're still waiting. Ben's getting the pricing and everything from what was this guy's name in Egypt? Oh, I can't we remember. We were talking about remember. him again. Yeah, yeah, Fuck, I, I should remember. remember. Yeah. He was, he's like, oh yeah, I'll tell you. But I yeah. remembered from the chat, him yeah. mentioning him. So he, he's going to talk to him. He'll give us sort of all the different options on tour and we'll pick that. But um, we had mentioned it at the event and people were sort of beating down the door already. So people have started emailing me. I mean, it's not going to be a cheap event. It's going to be somewhere in the six dollars $7,000 range. It'll be two weeks. Um, there'll, be, there'll be an add-on for a private room again, just like there was in Scablands. If you want to do that, it'll be sort of based on you being in a hotel room with another person. You'll have your own beds, like a regular hotel room, two-bed hotel room. Uh, but it'll be sort of the same thing. You get yourself to Egypt, and then we get you at the airport, and we're, then you're taken yeah. care of from there Yeah. until uh, you get dropped back off at the airport, and away you go. Yeah. And that's, like I say, we're definitely going to check out the, I've confirmed that we'll definitely see those crazy boxes and stuff underneath the Serapium and all that. And uh, what's that place called? Saqqara. 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 Yeah. And we'll be at the King's Chamber and all that in Giza. And there will be a boat ride involved. So uh, two weeks, it's coming. I mean, it's already being called the trip of, trip of a lifetime. Uh, the reason I wanted to mention it to you guys is honestly because like, it's still just a rumor and going, not a rumor, but like it's a rumor to most people. And it's like got mentioned in the chats here and there. And as of today, there's eight people emailed, you know, on what I guess is the waiting list to give deposits. And it's going to be a pretty limited thing. So if it's something you've been thinking about doing and you want to do it with us right now, it's just, if you go to the contact at the cabin.com site, there's a button there you can click on that'll get you in touch with me. And I'll get you on the list and let you know when you can get the deposit in and stuff like that. It'll be sometime in the next three, two to three weeks, we'll be ready to start actually taking deposits and we'll have a schedule of where we're going and when and what we're doing and all that. Nice. So, and Ben is super confident that there'll be no problems. I mean, Ben's going back there already this October. He's got two weeks. He's going to, um, Ben's going to South America this year and to, and to Egypt. So he's sure we won't have any problems there. So that's where we're at. Right on. That's where Good contact stuff. at Thanks the cabin's for the at. rundown. Wow. Well, it's kind of interesting timing because, uh, <laughs> I mean, I do have some news as well. We should probably talk about it. I wasn't sure when to share this with everybody, but uh, might as well be now yes. more than other. So I've been, I've been considering um, trying, to, trying to quit my day job, basically. And, uh, and I'm, we're doing it. I'm doing it. And uh, I'm not. And uh, the timing is interesting because uh, my last full-time day is uh, a couple days before my mom's operation. She has cancer. And uh, I didn't know about that at the time, but it turns out that uh, I'll be able to go directly from the job to visit my mom before her operation. She's going in for an operation. So she's had, she's had a couple operations uh, in the past. Uh, she had cancer in, uh, or she had, a, had something going on in 1992 and then it came up again a few years ago and now it's invasive. So she's, she's pretty brave. She's just going right for the operation. She's already connected it, which is pretty scary during COVID because there was a chance that uh, it might not even happen. Interesting stuff, but her, her doctor is really good. She's got a, a room in her office that she's going to have do the operation. Like, so she had to like jobs. take it outside the system yeah, in a way just to in, even in get a, it done. Yeah. In a way. Yep. 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 Yeah. I think her doctor's really good. Though they have to find an anesthesiologist and some, and some assistance and stuff. So it's almost like, uh, yeah. Interesting. So anyways, I mean, the thing is like, we don't make enough here yet to, to be able to do this, to be able to support me, but I, I need to take a leap. You know, it just wasn't fulfilling anymore for me and I need yeah. to take a leap. We, We've been doing audiobooks and and the podcast, and I want to focus a little bit more on that. And I just can't, I can't keep and the doing the new shows. Yeah. And the new shows, we have the Rockfin thing going, and Grimerica Outlawed, 
which we, you know, check out Grand America a lot for sure. But I mean, this isn't, you know, I mean, it is a, it is a leap of faith really. Um, it's not, uh, something that I can just easily transition to, but I think, uh, you know, they, 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 they want me to stay in my old job and I, and I think I'm going to stay part-time for a little bit to help transition. Um, and that'll help, that'll help us transition as well. And there's a bunch of other <laughs> ideas I have. I have lots of stuff I want to do, but, uh, it's interesting timing with my mom's cancer and this whole, like, you know, this, this next week being my last full-time week there. So, so good vibes, I guess I'm asking yeah. for good vibes from everybody, you know, good job we'll vibes, some good, good vibes good, uh, out to your mom, good for cancer sure. vibs and all that. And, uh, I'll keep everybody abreast with what happens. And if you want to make that uh, less of a leap of faith, you can ever go to slash support today and finally make that leap of faith into signing up for a monthly or, uh, you know, sign up for Outlaw. And one time. Sign up for our Rockfin stuff. Do a one-time donation. You know, whatever you can do to support what we're trying to do over here, trying to take it to that next level, to the full-time level, you know, and and turn that corner so we can do way more events and way more podcasts and hopefully yeah. bring way, way more good into the world. So, you know, if you head over to grandmaker.ca slash sport, you can sign up with any sort of method there and um, sign up for monthly. Or like I say, if you, if you want to check out our outlawed podcast, which is premium content where there's an hour free and an hour premium, you can check that out or we're on Rockfin. I did accidentally lose another two thousand dollars worth of oh. cryptos the other day oh trying God. to transfer those out. So I just oh said, "Fucking, it's unbelievable." It's funny though because I was talking to Greg on the way home from uh, Washington yesterday because I've been meaning to catch up with them, and I was just, you know, I had ten hours, so I, I call I call Greg. Actually, called me uh, back, and we were chatting for a bit, and I had mentioned that I had just, uh, we, I was talking about Rockfin. Talking actually, about, you, talking about talk you about, a little bit, actually. So you should talk That's about... That's how we got on it, was we were talking about you, about uh, exactly what we just talked about. And uh, and uh, when we started to talk about this and that, and he asked how Plus was going, and then we got to Rockfin, and I was like, well, Rockfin has been pretty good so far, except I lost $2,000 worth of cryptos the other day. And he's like, ha, ah, I just lost $2,000 worth of cryptos what? like fucking three days ago, what? too. Yeah. I don't know if you wanted me to divulge that, but <laughs> sorry, Greg. Um, no, but this is a warning for people too. Like this yeah, is because like it was you a scam. Fucking you didn't pay attention. Lose it. Let's let's now, be this clear. Is, this is Greg and I. I mean, I would consider us both quite savvy when it comes to internet stuff. I mean, we're both running internet companies on a successful level. So you know, but it's like they crypt tricked me because I got to use that kyberswap website dot com. And I, and it was, I had used it a few times and it was bookmarked. So I had it all set aside and bookmarked so I could just click it through my Coinbase wallet when I needed to get on there. But then when I got the new phone, when I went into my Coinbase wallet and logged in again, the bookmark wasn't there. So I type in KyberSwap, search for it on Google, and it comes up uh, KyberSwap right at the top. Looks identical. I click it. It looks like, I mean, it looks, looks identical, looks too. Like, this looks is identical. the scam. I mean, this is the scam. These I transfer are... my Ray, says, yeah, goes to ETH, yeah, and it even gives me, like, a really good conversion price. And I'm just like, whoa, that's way less than usual. Boom, swap now. And then it just sort of, like, glitches out for a second and then kicks me out of this site back to my wallet. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what the fuck is going on here? Uh, so it turns out it was Kai Bin Swap, KaiBinSwap.com. Instead of KyberSwap, they've made a swap mo- uh, mock website that just dumps into their collecting wallet. Um, and due to the nature of the blockchain and stuff, you can't ever get it back. It's gone for good. <laughs> and, and yeah, it's just like, you know, they spent all that time just trying to scam me. You know, that's not what happened to Greg. I don't know exactly the particulars of his story. It was a, a the same sort of thing where, you know, just, just didn't pay enough attention is what we both boiled it down to. It's just, you know, you got to really fucking watch every second of everything you're doing with those because, um, like I say, 
I mean, if I would have really looked at the URL up at the top, yeah, you would have noticed it. But, but they, they had gamed, looked it. But they had it looked gamed it. the Google it looked, ads. You showed me the difference yeah. when, when I came the in. Google like, ads good enough that it showed up above the real. No, Kyber not swap. only that, but they they gamed the actual website itself. I mean, you showed me when I came in. You're going, you're, you are like, dude, I got, I do have some bad news. <laughs> <laughs> and then you showed me the two websites, and they made it look exactly the same. You know, they so it's not like, you know. It, they did a quick job on it. I mean, they made it look the same. It looked, yeah. yeah. Oh, so that was a month of Rockfin revenue out the window. More than that, probably. That was exactly a month because I just pull it out once a month because of the fees and stuff. So it was like the monthly Rockfin pullout. Yeah. Just got, went up and smoked. Yeah. Like a day before I had to leave for fucking yeah. America. <laughs> yeah. That's okay because the event went well and we'll figure it out. Yeah. I, mean, I just, it's just another it's lesson, just a lesson just having to yeah. pay attention. I mean, yeah. They're getting more expensive. Hopefully yeah. this is the one that really hits home. Yeah. It was the low conversion fee. Just nailed me right away. I was like, it what, when is where it should have been a flag. I let my greed take over. I think I'm going to do a little bit of a rant too on the outlaw, one of our outlawed. I've got a bunch of stuff we want to share. Uh, a little bit more controversial sort of COVID related that we're not really talking about on this show much anymore, but we want to do a little bit of a, I think we're going to do a little bit of a rant. Uh, we're trying not to get this show stuff. canceled because yeah. it's pretty tied into a lot of yeah. infrastructure that yeah. the new show is not. Yeah, the new show is coming from its own. This one's all, all backed up, but there's yeah. still, you know, 10, 20,000 people on the old feed that we yeah. can't get kicked off. Yeah. I'd rather not go through that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, anything else to get to? That's about it. Yeah. Primeramerica.ca slash support if you can, when you can. Say head over to contact at thecabin.com if you want to get in on those events. Email me if you're interested in Egypt. Uh, enjoy the chat. It's a fun one. Yeah, this Alan's, is, this is good. Fun guy. I mean, this book was incredible. I mean, making contact. He's got essays from all the, like a lot of our past guests and a lot of these prominent UFO researchers and ET contact researchers. And yeah, dude, I don't know. It's interesting. We got another ET one coming up too soon. So it's, uh, Oh, and we Such got John Carpe coming up to give us a full legal update this yeah, week. Yeah, that'll be interesting. It's good time. Are we doing that on YouTube or how? Are we oh doing? yeah. So this is the regular Grand lawyer, America show. Bro. This if is the we regular. Well, dude, we didn't put him in last. We don't time. have we... to stream him on YouTube. Oh well, you we just... won't stream it on YouTube. Oh, but it'll be in the Grand America feed. Okay, so we're not going to stream it. It then? won't be on YouTube. We'll stream it on Rockfin. Okay, that's a good reason because YouTube Rockfin. will probably kick so, us. YouTube will strike us out for that. Listen, so, won't. So we can even, so just so you know, I mean, we can't even uh, stream Outlawed on YouTube. It's already struck, kicked off. It's already off. kicked off. So we've, we've, we're streaming our Outlawed first half on Rockfin. Well, I think for one free. of our Gramerica strikes comes off. So for free. This month so, sometime. So we'll be on there for this car paid one. Um, and, then it'll, and then the audio will be on YouTube? Are we no, gonna no, no. No, so we're not even it doing it. won't post to YouTube. I don't even bother anymore. Oh, you don't? It's not worth the YouTube stream. So you just put I mean, the audio? We're a podcast. YouTube, honestly, if okay, I'm being so super honest, Okay, so we're only going to do for YouTube's live streams like an and basically, right? advertising revenue so, for us. Because yeah. when we put stuff on YouTube, it's, it's, it tends, it's, what? it's like an advertising thing. That's yeah, the yeah, reason yeah. it's there. Because yeah. when we put it on YouTube, Google likes YouTube. Yeah, it's a it search. To have it's an SEO thing. Yeah, better. it's an yeah. SEO thing, yeah. We, we constantly hear from people that they found the show through YouTube and then started listening to the podcast. Do we? Still? Yeah. You, the defensive thing is the YouTube numbers never really go up. There's like 500 to 1,000 people that have just stuck it out with YouTube for the last like three years straight. And that number has just stayed steady while the um, so what you're, other numbers go up. So what you're saying is if we're not going to stream it on there, then it won't go on there at all. Yeah. So the, the John Carpe one will be live on Rockfin and then it'll go out in audio and podcast form. But it'll never be on YouTube. Okay. All right, that's fair enough. So, but it'll still be the regular Grand America show. Okay. Right. All right. And you're working on number two, Secret Doctrine. If you oh. want to get that Secret Doctrine, it's available as, in the, as an audiobook for the first time in history. Adultbrain.ca. Yeah. All right, guys. Enjoy the chat with Alan Steinfeld.
All right. Tonight we've got Alan Steinfeld with us. He's an explorer of consciousness, is a host of the weekly television series New Realities in New York. And he's also been at Contact of the Desert, and he's uh, been involved in the UFO field for quite a while. And his new book is fantastic. It's called Making Contact, Prepa- Preparing for the New Realities of Extraterrestrial Existence. There it is. There it is. Oh, yeah, there it is. Screen share. Yes. Awesome. So out on, get it on, out on, on May 4th. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So just go to Amazon, Making Contact, put my name, and order the book. <laughs> Thanks, Darren. Yeah, that's great. I mean, honestly, it was a good it was a good book because it, it was also more about it was also not just about ETs and making contact because you have a right. lot of the consciousness stuff in there, a little bit of the quantum physics and kind of, you know, like you said, preparing for the new realities. Um, mm. And I to be honest with you, my favorite chapter was yours. Oh, really? Thank yes. you. So I, I, I really appreciated your contribution to the book. Well, you know, I wrote a book that's a collection. It's not just my chapter. It's some of the best experts in the field, Nick Pope, who worked for the Ministry of Defense, Linda Moulton Howe, who's probably the, one of the best researchers out there, Whitley Strieber, who's one of the longest contactees. So I wanted a book that presented many different perspectives on the topic because no one knows the truth. Nobody, including the government, no matter what they say or don't say, know what's going on with this phenomena. So the only way, um, you know, they talk about in linguistics to have a cluster of meanings. So I wanted a cluster of approaches. So the reader could then say, okay, maybe this makes sense. This doesn't make sense. Maybe this is what's going on because, because contact is up to us. It's an inside job. That's what I tell people. Yeah, we were just talking to a, a guest who was a, um, he wasn't into all this stuff. He was a libertarian politician kind of thing. And we were talking about how consciousness is, plays a huge role in all this stuff and in, in contact, you know, depending right. on your intention and your belief systems and all that. I mean, do you want to ex- explore a little bit about how consciousness plays a role in this? Yeah, because, I mean, we even use the word consciousness, but we actually don't even know <laughs> what consciousness is. Yeah. I mean... Are we're conscious, but are we, and we're conscious of being conscious. I think that's what separates us from the animals. Animals are conscious, but they're not, maybe some of them are, maybe dolphins and whales are, but they're not aware of awareness. Consciousness and awareness can be used interchangeably. Other people say they're slightly different, but consciousness I talk to Deepak Chopra a lot. He's like the king of consciousness. He said, it's all, it's all there is. But um, consciousness is something that uh, people say there's no plural. There's only consciousness. So my consciousness and your consciousness are aspects of the greater reality, which is consciousness. So if we're connected through this medium of consciousness, then maybe that's not limited to this planet maybe what's conscious and of the greater mind let's say there's a greater mind out there that we're all connected to like all the cells in our bodies are connected to one one big organism maybe we're part of a bigger organism and maybe that's not limited to earth maybe we're just one organ and maybe there's these other organs out there that make one greater consciousness right yeah so you know consciousness is a very vague and fuzzy term but we something's coming into our realm ufos uaps whatever you want to call that to expand possibility And when you expand possibility, so there's something from out there, wherever out there is, that seems to be visiting us and have been for since 1947, Roswell for sure, but maybe hundreds or maybe thousands of years we've been visited. Maybe what Eric Von Donneken called the um, chariot of the gods were these aliens that came and gave us religions and all that. So- Our story has always been connected to something beyond ourselves, but the mystery, I think, is in us as 
as well. We are the mystery. We are part of the mystery. The mystery is out there, but the mystery exactly actually is consciousness. How are we these thinking beings? And how do we actually understand each other with these kind of fake language symbols that I'm making a sound and you're hearing the sound and you're sort of getting into my mind by hearing these sounds and knowing what I'm intending, which is beyond the sound, right? Yeah, only so ba- already- only based on my perception and my knowledge of what that sound is. Exactly. But I think we have an agreement on what the sound means. Of course, if we're speaking a different language, it would be different. But um, let's say there are other beings that are not using sounds, but thought impressions or dreamscapes to communicate with us. And we were all part of this greater consciousness. That's my approach. So, yeah, ETs, they're not ETs, they're not ETs, and they are that, I think, from other worlds, other domains, but they are here to show us more about ourselves. That's sort of my approach. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, totally. And I mean, I do like how you put different approaches in the book, different uh, like mm-hmm. cluster of approaches, um, yes. because it's a good time to it's good time to explore all this because we've gone through the last uh, let's say three or four years we've gone through all kinds of crazy acceptance and we have we have sort of like normal friends and people saying hey you were kind of right about UFOs because I saw mm-hmm. it in the New York Times or now I kind of mm-hmm. believe because it's now in the public's eye officially or whatever and then there's all of us that have been studying this for decades and we're like oh god you know this is. This is uh, we don't want to we don't know what to believe anymore because we don't trust the organizations that are giving us this information or let's just for example. I mean, a lot of stuff has changed over the last few years. So do you find that that it's um, especially, you know, over the last year, the trust level of institutions and governments? I mean, it's at an all time low, I would say. It is. And you know what? They don't know what's going on. That's the big problem here. They don't know how to manage the phenomenon. They don't even know what to say about it. They recently changed the whole branding approach from UFOs to UAPs. That's to kind of give it a little friendly, more scientific appeal. It's really, what did they change from UFO, unidentified flying object, to UAP, unexplained aerial phenomena? They went from object to phenomena. So the government's giving us a little hint that this is more than just ships in the sky. There's a phenomena happening here. And you know what? They have no idea what it is. I think they don't want to admit that because that means they're helpless. That means they, you know, don't know how to protect us if that's really what the military is here to do. I mean, protect us from what? They don't, they don't see us from. So how, but that idea of protection is sort of an old um, paradigm anyway. Yeah. They are protecting, they are hiding the truth because nobody really knows what's going on. That is why there's 11 different essays and 12 plus George Nori to explain it by the best people I've met in this business, if you want to call it a business, to talk about what they know after 40, 50, 60 years of investigation. What do what do the experts know and what do they agree on and what do they disagree on? Right. So that's really what I point out here. And then what does the reader come away with? as their own idea after reading it. And because course, I think if we get enough points of view, whenever they show up, whoever they are, and whenever that is, there'll be less fear. Because with knowledge, we need knowledge to prepare us for the unknown. If you don't have awareness, if you don't have knowledge, then you might see something and just be freaked out. But if you say, oh yeah, that's what someone wrote about in the book, and then maybe that's what that is, there's a lot more openness and there's less fear. Yeah, that's a good point. What was the most agreed upon thing? That's a great question. And I actually highlight that. And that's really, thank you for bringing that. Bringing that, bringing that on thing is telepathy. In 10 out of the 11 essays, they say there's a form of telepathic contact that seems to be made with these beings. And that is, that is, 
goes back to your question about consciousness. You have to be aware of awareness in order to understand or get or receive a telepathic contact. So the guy who's had the most telepathic contact is this guy, Daryl Anka. Do you know who he is? Yeah, yeah Bashar. Exactly. Yeah. He's been in a 38-year, 38-year, 38-year extraterrestrial named Bashar. So he talks about telepathic, telepathy, telepathy and empathy. He calls it telepathic. So that's, and this is what I think we have to wake up to the fact that we're telepathic. You know, we can communicate. I teach remote viewing and it's amazing how, how phenomenal people right off the bat are just saying, okay, what, what's the target here in this picture? That I'm not showing you. I'd say 80% of the people get the target first time. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, I find it hard. I mean, I find, yeah, I find remote viewing very hard and I find, uh, I've tried it a a few different times, a couple different courses and I find it hard. And I even find just to separate out the distraction in my mind compared to something that could be telepathic or downloading. I mean, I feel like that's, that's not so easy, you know? Take Lynn Buchanan's course. Lynn Lynn teaches a course called um, uh, coordinate remote viewing. And what, I took a uh, look, a, just a quick um, workshop with Russell Targ, the guy who invented remote viewing from the uh, Stanford Research Institute. And the key that he told me in remote viewing is notice what's different that's coming into your mind. So we have our usual thoughts. And then some things come left field, like just an image or an impression. He says, that's the signal, not the noise. The noise is what you're always thinking about. The signal is boom. I don't, and when you say, I don't know where that came from the same thing with telepathy from the aliens or just your, your, your two of you there <laughs> sitting next to each other, to each other, to each other. I come from, sometimes it's the, it's the recycled thoughts, but sometimes you get an impression and boom, that's telepathy. That's the signal. Yeah, that's a good. So, that's a good point. I like I've that. tried messaging Graham, and he never picks I, up I on never it. I never pick up and on it's it. It's always <laughs> my fault. Really? Well, <laughs> you have to quiet your mind. You know that. You yeah. just have to sit and just um, try not thinking. Yeah, can you, I, can I, do- <laughs> totally. I can try. I've tried that for decades. Try Does he have to know I'm sending it? Because this was just like I was driving home and I forgot something. I just sort of like, hey, Graham, grab that. Exactly. He didn't grab it, though. No, no. I never, I never well, listened to him telepathically. Well, you should practice sitting at, staring at each other. In the, can you do that for a show? Just that, no, that across. would be super uncomfortable. I'd start <laughs> crying and stuff. I mean, it would just be very emotional. We just stared at each other in the eyes. But it's a good advice. Uh, okay. But you know, right there, you guys just made a contact when you looked at Why each other. Why would you cry? <laughs> you, you, you just Have you tried that with anybody? Right. Stare. Well, I like stare at everyone stare. in the eyes no, when I talk. No, but I mean, like, right like there. literally, I, like I can, staring. I can do therapy with you guys if you want to, like, uh, get the. Okay, that's another show. So, okay, where were we? <laughs> oh, look, the chickens are interested in this. Oh, the chickens in the no, yard but, are looking in. T- but telepathy is something all of us, and it's remote viewing is an aspect of telepathy that we're all capable of doing, it seems like. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So so do you, uh, what was my question there? Darren asked what the what they all agreed upon, which is fascinating, telepathy. Yeah. Um, and, go ahead. And, no, but also that the UFO thing is bigger than just ships in the sky. That's yeah. something everyone's agreed upon. It's like, There's something else happening here than just visitors from another planet. I don't know what that is, but there's a paranormal element. People start to have weird synchronicities. They, um, when you see a UFO, also Grant Cameron mentions this in the second essay in the book. I saw the first essay is Nick Pope, just talking about the hardware and government cover up. Grant Cameron is another investigator who says, if you see a UFO, you were meant to see it. You're part of the story. So if you're part of the story, what does that mean? That we're we're waking up to some new realities that include the bigger picture of what it is to be human. That's sort of a bigger part. Yeah. I want to get back a little bit to the 
the government, let's say, or the governments or whatever, not, yeah, not, yeah. not really knowing what's going on. A friend of mine just did a bunch of research and I thought it was very appropriate for the timing of this because I wanted to ask you about it because it's sort of about the contemporary sightings of all these orbs that mm-hmm. are being seen. They're calling them drones or orbs and it's in Colorado. Yeah. It's in the, the, the U S Navy right. off of California. And he went back to all these different sightings and, and all of them said they had, they had red and white light. So he's like, there's something common going on here. They've got these red and white lights. So, mm. I mean, is there, is there a chance that a lot of, or some of this is, 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 uh, is out there for our consumption in the media now because it's a distraction away from our, um, our, our mm. terrestrial technology that is that is being used in mm. some countries or governments, and they want to make it about ET or yeah, you know, I don't know about the drones, drones, drones. Uh, that may be <laughs> government intel. I know what Grant Cameron says in his essay, "The Theory of Wow." He says, "Do you really think UFOs need lights to travel across the universe to get here?" Exactly. I mean, he says those lights. Are if to you be see seen. a light, on, yeah. it's just for us. Yeah. It is for us. But there could be, I think the drones, I saw a drone out in South Dakota uh, over uh, uh, Lakota Reservation out there. I don't know why. It was just in the sky for a long time, but it didn't have the same feeling as a UFO. Like I've seen UFOs. I've seen them in New Mexico. I saw them in Arizona. I even saw one in New York City. They have a kind of weird vibe to it. The drone I saw seemed very mechanical or earthly in a sense. So I, I think maybe the government's trying to confuse people about what's out there. And then maybe they'll come out and say, guess what? It was all drones and don't be afraid. Go back to your uh, go back to drinking beer and watching the ball game, which is OK, you know. Yeah, if people yeah. want to do that. So I don't know. I don't know about the drones, but there is there's stuff like Skinwalker Ranch. Have you heard about that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 What have you heard about that? Well, I mean, just the whole portals and the go- I mean, it also goes back to Grant. I mean, we talked to him a couple of times and Grant was talking right. about the government's interest in portals themselves and and the people that uh, the people that invested in a tip there or, or the uh, Bigelow and them. They were studying yes. some of the phenomena. Um, I can't remember the name of the scientific organization that they're. Oh yeah, you yeah. Know. Well, I think portals are real. You know, I yeah. think that, and I, according to Grant, of course, he says that's the big story. It's not UFOs; it's portals. But I also want to talk about when I've seen these ETs appear in my dreams. They are very weird. Their energy is very strange. It's like they are different than human beings. Like I'm looking at you two guys, like, you know, I could pass you on the street, you regular sort of people. I think, I don't know you very well, but you seem like, you know, regular guy. But when you're in the presence of these other beings, something weird, there's like a weird frequency. It's like, it's not creepy, but it's, uh, it's definitely distorting. And, um, there's not a normal way to make sense of it. You know, there's something off in these beings, whoever they are. And uh, we have to learn how to practice being in these altered state, altered state, altered. That's sort of what I have to say about that. I, yeah. I like that because I, I do agree with you that the, the more you're sort of open to this or reading about it or learning about it. And when you do, if something does happen, it will create that little bit of space for you, maybe not to react, maybe to um, right. uh, respond instead of reacting to it. Maybe, you know, your fear doesn't kick in. Maybe you can start being curious about it. What about spirits yeah. or gods? I mean, we have all these, Ancient civilizations he used to talk about the gods coming down to them, maybe procreating with them or having conversations with mm-hmm. them from the Greeks to the Romans to the, you know, mm. all down the gamut, the gods were sort of interacting. I mean, people kind of spin that the way that it's always been aliens, but it could, you could go the other way too, you know? Right. You know, we're so used to such a simple cosmology, used to just like, um, there's people and maybe there's angels and that's as far as uh, most people get, or there may be disincarnate, maybe ghosts, but what if the world and the universe was much more complex? What if there were gods and aliens and ends and, and, and trolls and gnomes and invisible dimensions? I think there are, 
I think this is the simplest dimension there is. You, what you see is what you get. And there are other vibratory fields. There are some people call them ultra celestials where they're vibrating at a really high rate. Maybe they're the ascended masters. We've been so dumbed down to think by our media and our religion and maybe movies open us up a little more, but what we're capable of comprehending and taking in within our brain, our conceptual apparatus is so much more vast than we've been told it is. So yeah, they may be gods, whatever that means. They may, maybe we are the gods. Maybe there's more to us as human beings. Maybe we're really equal to these phenomena, these entities, but we haven't been aware of that. Maybe we really do create our own reality, but nobody has told us that we can. So we have to break out of this box. And that's part of the purpose of this book to show there's more to us. There's more to our reality. It's like um, we have to talk in the higher language of vibration and frequency and dream worlds. We have to go into this dreamscape. It's like if you're talking to your dog, you're not going to bark at it. You're going to talk in the language <laughs> of the more evolved being. This is how these beings through telepathy, symbols, synchronicities, um, downloads. So many people are getting these downloads. They don't know where they came from. Inventions and songs. Grant talks about all these songs. It's like when you open your mind, a lot of stuff can pour in. So that's the message. One of the messages of the book, just open to possibility and let's start evolving human civilization from warlike, you know, awful beings committing genocide and atrocities and shooting and mass shooting. I mean, just horrible things we've done to each other. So we have nothing to fear from those other beings that we haven't already done to ourselves. Right. So, yeah. And I like, I like the aspect of evolving and, and uh, improving and recognizing our potential. Like Caroline Corey came on the show. It was one of my favorite episodes that we did because we went over her movie, superhuman, which was fantastic. And I mean, just people seeing that with their eyes covered, I mean, seeing without their eyesight, I mean, there's all kinds of amazing things we can do, but people just, it's not out there yet. There's people don't realize how much, uh, how much potential we have. We have to educate. We have to re-educate children about what is possible. We really do. We have to um, understand that we're part, that who we've been told, like I said, like Carolyn Corey, I just, she's the last chapter in that book. And she's been, she's the closest thing I've met to an ET. Carolyn is really an integrated being. She, she, activated with her human potential, human potential, human, there's ETs here. And of course we can talk to them and exchange with them and they already function in this superhuman way. So we have to start with the children and have them read through blindfolds and have them learn remote viewing when they're younger. And um, so much, we have to re-educate ourselves that we're part of a bigger cosmos. It it, it, it Darwinian Newtonian science says life is an anomaly, you know? Yeah, it's here, but how did it get? We're not the freaks, not the freaks, not the freaks of nature. We're not just spontaneously appearing from like dried mud being struck by lightning. There's another <laughs> level, right? We're, we're not freaks. We're not bastards. We're not like these um, strange anomalies. I think life is an emergent property of creation. Yeah. Don't you think so? Yeah, yeah, very much so. And it would oh. seem to be the case when you can remove a bunch of ice and just have every fucking lake in North America filled with all sorts of different fish in a couple of thousand years. Right. You know, and Gary Nolan, someone Carolyn's interviewed at the University of Las Vegas said, DNA is older than the planet Earth. He says DNA is 9 billion years old. The Earth is 4 or 5 billion. How do you explain that? Yeah. Well, well, I could explain it with a high-power computer simulation, maybe. You could, but where would that come from, right? Where, where, all that, where, where did DNA come from? Is it, is it everywhere? 
So I'm sure you guys have had some kind of experience, right? Some weird, unexplainable. Yeah, sort of yeah, definitely. I've had like a couple what? of them. Well, I had a UFO sighting in Israel in 1990. It was a uh, it was a dodecahedron shaped craft in the air, uh, spinning with the have spinning against itself, and the whole thing rotating on its axis. And my friends saw it twice. I saw it once uh, in the wow. same in the same encounter. And I asked for it. I said, "Please come back. Please come back." And it came back. Wow! And Did I that it. change? Just just, yeah, just, yeah, it did. Yeah. It did. I mean, it, it's like I was thinking about it when you said what Grant Grant said that we we're all meant mm -hmm. to see something. But you know, the people that I saw it with, it didn't change them. It, it, they just chalked it up to something crazy, a couple of beer, too many extra beers or something. Right. But it changed me and another guy for sure. Well, maybe that's who it was supposed to change. Yeah, maybe. And then I kind of had a like a Kundalini type of uh, awakening a, a while back. That after, I, I after know, the but, UFO, you had the Kundalini awakening. Yeah, it was quite a ways after. I mean, I went into a bit of a slumber after the UFO uh, for for about well, a decade, probably. You know. Well, you know, when you're, I don't know if the UFO made you go into a slumber, but it does shake up people's reality, and. Um, it does. You have to kind of re-identify with yourself with what's real. And that's part of the book. You know, Joe Dispenza says without knowledge, there's there's no insight. The book is provide knowledge. So when you have that experience, then you can start to relate it to what's possible. Yeah. So yeah. wait. So what? what's your name? What's your two names? I thought I'm Graham, done. Graham and Darren. Oh, you're Graham. You're yeah, Darren. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Darren, what about you? You have any unusual experience? I, I well, I seen like a satellite fuck off in <laughs> the wrong direction once, and we were smoking a joint. That's good. That counts. I've had I some mean, psychedelic experiences. He, yeah, he had a pretty ego busting DMT experience. A bunch of well, mushrooms. Those so. are doorways, you know. I think as the psychedelic the LSD phenomenon happened, you know, as the world was opening up and. Um, there were these other realities to explore. So it's all good. It's all good. But I think if you ask nine out of 10 people, they've had some unusual anomalous, anomalous, not explained. And let's have the public conversation about that. And why keep it in the closet? Yep. Let's say, and it, just like psychedelics, like now the, now the, now the, now it's like, looks is like, looks like around and it's like, okay, this might be, technology of the mind that um people can act people can act people there's a whole there's a whole his name anthony p who talks about psychedelics and did you interview him yeah 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 well he says the psychedelics is a realm into these um ufo et worlds i i don't know but i think those realms are part of the part of the part of our dream states actually the yeah. 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 I think there, I think it's all connected as well. I mean, I, do you, do you, can you talk about your chapter in the book a little bit and yeah. your, your experiences? Cause th that was the fascinating part for me. Well, thank you. You know, I have to say, I, I, I wrote it from a kind of childlike perspective. Did you read the chapter, Darren? No, I don't read the books. I just, okay. uh, I'm the guy on the street. <laughs> I'm going to get the audio book for you. Okay. Well, anyway, I'll tell you the story. That's okay. Um, because I, I take, I write it from a real child's point of view because I was always interested in science fiction. I always felt really different than the rest of my family. I thought, well, um, they're doing the regular thing. And I, I was kind of bored with that growing up in suburbia. And it's like, what else is going on? So I, I always thought, I always thought, I was like, how come no one's talking about the stars and the moon? How come I, like, like I'm like really fascinated with those um, ideas, those possibilities, like, and they just looked like there had to be something else out there. Why were the stars there anyway? This is like a six-year-old perspective. Started to read a lot of science fiction books and like really become obsessed with that. And then Star Trek, the, the original series was on as I was growing. I had to watch every episode. But then, you know, you get into high school, you get into like, you know, emotional dramas and relationships. And like, I, I kind of put that all towards psychology and it's like, okay, I want interested in, in the mind. And, uh, I never forgot about the science fiction realm, but you know, I think I, there was a sixth grade teacher who says, no, get to into reality. You know, this is reality, not science fiction. It's like, so, but I always thought something was possible. So I came to Sedona in 1987 
on a cross country trip. People were talking about it was the UFOs, but I met this woman and we drove back east cross country and we stopped at this very it's uh, we're driving along route 80 and there was this place in western nebraska it said enter at your own rest risk by this deserted canal and uh because we were really tired we just went we just went and we felt like we were frozen in suspended animation throughout the whole like we didn't move and I thought that was weird. What's really going on here? And then I had this mark on the back of my leg, this four prong puncture mark. And I thought, oh, it must be a spider bite. And then when I got back to New York, I was doing a video for this choreographer who was dancing this abduction dance. And that's when I started to hear about the abduction thing. I abduction thing. I abduction. heard about a mark on the back of the leg. And she goes, yes, that's an abduction mark. I said, really? And then it kind of freaked me out. I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready to really enter that realm. And um, I started to meet people like I met Bud Hopkins. You know who Bud Hopkins is? Yep. Yep. And John Mack and Whitley Strieber. And there was this whole, and it still is sort of an underground scene, but people were talking about these, these sort of frozen time, missing time. And it's like a lot of stuff happened to me that, um, that people were talking about. And I, but I still didn't want to believe it because it was, you know, it's great if other people tell the story, but if you have the experience, it's like, really? Is this stuff really true? And eventually, I was regressed and did have this memory of, but you know, my regression wasn't like I remember this because I have to say there's something traumatic about the contact experience with the grays. I think now more people are used to it and it's less traumatic. So I think I blocked out what happened because I just couldn't integrate. It's like trauma is a way of protecting your mind from the reality you're experiencing. So I had this regression, but I wasn't mem- remembering it, but I wasn't making it up. It was coming, it was coming from an aspect of my reality, but I did see these beings that took me in this, me in this, me in this, aboard this ship and they kind of extracted something from me. And a couple of months after I had that experience, I, In a dream state, I was given this little being to hold in my hand. This little, I have to say it looked like a deer. I can't say it looked human. It didn't look alien. This was maybe a screen, maybe a screen, maybe that's weird. And then I just really started to dive down the rabbit hole and wanted to know everything I could about the phenomenon. I wanted to know who the experts were. I wanted to know, I mean, I must have 500 books in my apartment about uh, the UFO experience. And so do we need one more book there? I thought we needed this book because this puts together what everyone has said about it and makes a kind of narrative of it. So my experience was weird. It's dreamlike. It was otherworldly. It's like, It didn't happen in this level of reality, but something happened. So there's something out there that wants to be known and we're here to know it. And I don't know what it is. And most people, the government certainly doesn't know what it is, but we are here to have a public conversation about what it is. What do you think it is, guys? I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's, it's ET. It's uh, interdimensional. It's a secret uh, sort of breakaway civilization that are running some of these crafts as well that we don't know. uh, You know, it's hard to tell the difference sometimes. I think it's sort of all of the above. I mean, yeah. But you know what? I think it's connected to quantum physics. You know about quantum physics? Well, as much as I can. No, I don't. It's hard to wrap your head around a little bit. I, I I know. If you know, I think there's a, uh, uh, equation between consciousness, ETs, or UFOs, and quantos and quantos, because it all deals with the observer, right? Yeah, the observer effect, and I think there's something um, that's very abstract about the UFO phenomena. I think there's something that's subjective. I think there's something that can't be known in the way we know reality. No reality. No. I quote John Mack in my book. You know who John Mack is? Yep. yep. And John Mack, the Harvard psychiatrist, says that 
In order to understand this phenomena, we need other ways of knowing. We have to step out of the linear, rational mind. And that's what we're really attached to, rational. Lin- I think psychedelics, altered states, they get us into other shamanic practices. It gets us out of that rational state. And I think that's really where we have to go to start to integrate what this is really about. It's not linear. It's not rational as we know rationality. It's we, something else. Yeah, we'd go, we'd be out looking for UFOs in our CE5 group and all that. And some people would see this, the same thing and others in the circle wouldn't see it. I mean, it's so how is that? There's something about the observer effect there that some people are pulling it in, some people aren't. And sometimes right. we would see all the same thing. I mean, sometimes we'd all get up out of our chair and exclaim like, oh my God, look at that. You know, I mean, you'd, everybody sees it, but not all the time. It's very strange. So if but you could you manifest more, reality yeah. though, then you could be able to just manifest those things too. You know, it could just be part of the like side effect of the co-creation of reality. It, it could all be, it could be what the gods used to be and the aliens are now. And it's all just because, you know, if we can do use intention and manifestation to do things and that's not out of the realm of possibility that it's almost like a tulpa in a sense, which is what my take on some of the gods could even be lately, is that if enough people believe in them, there, then there, there could be dozens of gods running around up there, down exactly. there, wherever. No, if enough people believe in UFOs, ETs, maybe that's exactly what it is, a manifestation of the unconscious, right? Yep. I mean, yep. Yeah, because that, uh, the, yeah, that unconscious is kind of the key is once you can dabble into that unconscious, you're, you're in, in my experience, you're in my opinion, I guess as well. Yeah. It, you're now you're at that quantum level. You're playing in that you're in, you're in the quantum level. And at the same time, you're in the realm of the gods where, where you can tweak things and adjust them. And that's the incredible thing about consciousness. It's so malleable. We don't even know how to use it. We don't even know how to use what we got. It's, it's, like, it's like a default. If you don't um, set your password, some uh, the password be set for you. If you don't know how, how to use consciousness, the, the program reality will tell you what's real. So well, our civilization's at such a point that if you don't live your life, it'll just drag you along and your whole life will just, you'll just be a, in the passenger seat. Passenger. Be a robot to the system that's already in place that wants to keep, wants to keep, wants to perpetuate its profits and its greed and all those things that um, keep the bigger, that, that kind of corporate system and system and system. This is why, you know, we're in school for 12 years, college, and we sit behind a desk and all we can do when we graduate, if you're not like an adventurer, is sit behind a desk and, you know, that's okay if people want to do it, but there's definitely more to reality than sitting behind the desk. Not that there's anything wrong with sitting behind the desk you're sitting behind, guys. But Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> well, no, no but, I mean, let's, 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 let's not like sugarcoat it. There is. I mean... Yeah, there, there is. There is. I mean, absolutely. There is. You're just you're wasting it. Right. And it's there's something magical. And, and you do have to sit behind that desk maybe for eight hours a day because that's how you make ends meet. But you don't have to sit behind that desk to sit behind the car to go to behind the steering right. wheel to go sit at the dinner table and not talk and stare at your phone and then go sit on the couch and watch television until you go to bed. That's what life is in the in 21st century, though. That is most of people. Oh, oh. They're missing, missing, missing bigger reality. So we're already in the zombie apocalypse. Absolutely, we're, we're in it. But the UFOs, ETs, whatever's out there, maybe are here to help wake us up to out of the apocalypse. That's kind of what I was going to ask you is, are they helping? Yeah. Are they, you know, I mean, uh, one of the, th- I mean, I've read a couple books where they're sort of skeptical on that. They're like, well, they've made c- contact with the governments or with higher levels. And then, so why are the, the good ETs that we can go out and make contact with in the dark sky with a new moon, you know, why aren't they kind of intervening here? They, they I think they are intervening the good ETs. They, ETs. They, it says UFO is like a, 
outreach program from the cosmos for cosmos for the cosmos. <laughs> That's us. We are the consciously impaired. They are intervening. They're showing up in greater numbers, greater numbers, greater back to the government. I think Darren will appreciate there's sort of a fracture within the deep state sort of um, containers that some people want to come out with this and some people don't. And there's like, I, I don't know that, but I suspect there's some kind of inner, 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 if you want to call it that struggle to get the truth out there because it's time and other people saying, no, we need to hold back. So we're at like a real breaking point within the mass culture where the zombie mindset is about to crack open and people are going to be shocked because it's not, they're not going to see this on their television. They're going to see it maybe in their skies or you're going to get a telepathic download and you say, what's that? So I think it's all going to come loose. That's interesting. So how do you, how do you see that playing out then? It's not going to be from our governments per se, because I've, I've always been an advocate for a disclosure that was just like, accept the mystery that it's a mystery mm -hmm. and the media and the scientific establishment or academia should accept the mystery as it is. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean we have all the answers and the government doesn't have to say it's true or not. They don't even have to get involved. It's just the, you know, the, the PR department of the government, the media and, and the academia to accept it. How do you think it's going to play out from an official mm -hmm. stance? Well, it's being played out more. Did you see the New York Times, April 12th? There are yeah. more and more people are, are seeing having UFO sightings worldwide. There's more people I meet all the day, every day. People, straight laced people who never believed any of this stuff. Even, even by the government, there was a post on Reddit by a woman named Anjali. She had a, a near death experience, but then she started to see these ETs and she was inside government intel and she just like saying these beings are here and they're talking to us and they're coming and then we have to clean up our act and i would say more and more people uh the average people people who don't think anything about it are starting to see something and wake up the phoenix lights woke up the whole city of phoenix in 1997 yeah. lynn katai a normal doctor gp her life was never the same. She dropped her practice for like 10 years in order to say, what happened? What did I just see? So it's being played out in a way, one by one. I mean, and eventually, you know, truth passes through three stages. You've heard that by Schopenhauer. Yep. First, it's ridiculed. No, first, it's denied. Then it's ridiculed. And then it's taken as self-evident. We are coming out of the ridicule phase into the self-evident phase. And this is progress. This is, this, is evolu this is an evolution for the human species. When we realize we're part of something bigger, uh, something else starts to wake up in us. You know, something else starts to happen. And we start to, I think, realize we're, we're just one humanity. And why are we killing each other? That's like the biggest mystery here. What is all that about? Yeah, I mean, but I, I, I kind of hate putting that on the people. I, I like to try and hold the people that are that are running the show responsible for the genocides and the wars. I mean, I don't think that we're we're inherently <clears throat> warlike ourselves. I think we're more cooperative. But there's forces that mm -hmm. you know brainwash us or or whatever that I get us into all that. I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of relationships can be sort of abusive and yeah, not that's all good point. of them. But that's a good point. Yeah. Right. I think we're yeah. animals. Yeah, we're that's like a good point. Not, and we we need to be the gods, as Darren said. We we are we we have to take care of those personal relationships as well. If we're not nice to each other in our house. And most of most of the violence happens at home, maybe Yeah, good families. point. Good point. Yeah. Well, that's where the homework is. We have to clean up our mess. You know, Marshall Rosenberg, who I met, who he, he started this thing called nonviolent communication. He was negotiating between the Israelis and Palestinians. And he said the worst violence he ever seen has been in families between husbands and wives and parents and children. That was worse than negotiating these, you know, um, uh, you know, decade long, uh, long feuds that have been happening. So yeah, I've had his read his books. He's got good stuff. Yeah. So we have to clean up who we are. You know, the great masters talk about being impeccable. 
if we can be impeccable with the earth, with not dropping garbage, with each other, with ourselves, you know, with our word, with our word. Yes. Thank you for that. Yes. So that's going to change us. And that's the way we're going to get ready for something bigger is to become like nice human beings. You know, I, I talked to Bruce Lipton. He says, we're not humans until we have humanity. Humanity is when we're all sort of cohesive and in touch and in harmony, not one world order, but a one uh, sentient. Well, it's contact. It doesn't have to be contact with extraterrestrials or anyone. It could be contact with people you care about, people you love, people you never met before, just contact with people. Yeah, if contact starts at home, making contact starts at home. When these beings don't want to have anything, this is my feeling with like uh, a bunch of animals whose favorite pastime is tribal warfare. This is something Stanton Friedman used to say. It's like, we have to grow up. I'm, I'm you know, looking at my behavior and what, what can I do better and be more impeccable. So that's sort of a side benefit to entering the bigger picture of the cosmos, we have to be more human. Yeah. You know? I like it. I, li- I love that. You know, cl- I mean, be, be the change that you want to see in the world too. It all comes back to, to that kind of thing. Well, it really does. Cause it doesn't matter if there's aliens visiting us in a way, what are we doing to each other? That's the big picture here. Yeah. That's really, that's how I start my book about getting over the, did you see, did you see the introduction to the book there? Yeah. yeah. Uh, By Nori. Th- no, Ben Nori, but then after that, I do this little prologue yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And I say, it's by this abolitionist from 1844, where he talks about new experiencing, breaking, oh, breaking, oh, break, and new, new possibilities. And this is what we need to be ready for, but we have to clean up our mess. I heard a rumor that Coast to Coast was a government shell operation. What do you think about that? I heard a guy that got offered Nori's job and he turned it down because there was too much. Uh, too much, I, I don't uh, believe. Trouble. I don't believe that. I think George is pretty sincere. I like George. He actually wrote the. No, there's a lot of people who say some of the my favorite experts are are government paying. I, I mean, I think the guy who said that about George Norrie is probably a government intel telling Ooh. people. Right. <laughs> that's that's. I the hope same not, because he said some crazy stuff that maybe yeah. only a government person would know. <laughs> exactly. So you have to watch what you're saying and what we believe. You know, I think the not to offend anyone, but I think all those people that believe in the flat earth, that's just to make people look ridiculous. I think that started from the intel to make this, you know, if you believe flat earth and believe UFOs, it all looks just silly, you know? So we have to really be careful with what we believe, what we hear, who's saying it. And, you know, I tried to get the people I feel of them had the most integrity in this book who really did the hard work and put it out there and who I think are saying what's true. There's something going on here and we're part of it and we have to wake up to the bigger picture of reality. Yep. I love it. Did you have more, uh, did you have more sightings to physical sightings later on? Yeah, I did. I was in New York city with this guy who calls himself a sort of ET and he says he gets (laughs) messages from them. It's like, yeah, right. Um, I don't think so, but he sent to what he sent to what he's, and he goes there here. And I say, where? And he says, and he points straight up and straight above. There were like maybe, half a dozen of these silver objects, these silver ball, but way up in the sky. I mean, higher than any airplane, but you could, and then, well, they were there. Something was there. There was another time in New York city where I saw this strange light moving. I thought I saw like a blue beam come out of it. And I said to myself, did I see a, did I see a, did I, and then it happened again. So, and then I have, uh, I then have had dream contact and, um, and, and Grant, Grant Cameron says a lot of stuff happens in dreams. And I mentioned two, two of the most famous, um, rock and roll songs that talk about ETs and dreams, you know, the John Lennon dream number nine on his walls and bridges album, my, no mind games. One of those, he had seen a UFO and then he wrote this song called dream number nine. 
And um, after the gold rush, Neil, Neil, Neil Young wrote, you know, I had a dream. I saw the silver spaceship flying in the yellow haze of the sun. So these things and dreamscapes are more real for people because that's really the reality, I think, of the ETs. They're more dreamlike. But they're not dreams. They're just altered states of consciousness. Do you work with your dreams at all? Like, do you lucid dream? Are you a regular? Can you do that? Is it, do you have any tips for people? I do. When I went to see the Aborigines, I went to Australia, not to understand this, but to do a sort of documentary about them. Uh, but they, dream time to them is their religion. And they don't have like these external worships. And they told me how you do dream time is that you watch your mind. Other people have said this too. You watch your mind as you're falling asleep. And it's sort of like uh, remote doing. You start doing, you start doing. You watch, hear the voices, see the images, and you start to see the things that just appear in your mind um, from nowhere. And then you're in the dream time and they get messages from the great spirit, whatever they call their, that in those in that state so it's uh, being aware as you fall asleep and watching your what your mind does as it's sleeping it's being lucid in the dream but you can do it a- as you're entering the dream time state so you are you know you're getting tired 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 aware so don't lose the awareness as the dream state unfolds I mean, somebody says we're actually always dreaming, but our conscious mind makes such a loud noise, but that we don't notice it. (laughs) I I think that's true. I think, you know, sometimes you get um, a deja vu that just kind of flips into these dream realities and these and these are always dreaming. You notice a dream never just says this is the beginning of a dream. It's like you're, it's like that movie that came out. What was it called? Where they Inception the or whatever. Yeah, Inception. yeah, exactly. Yeah. They always enter the dream in progress. We are in the dream in progress. And so that's another sign that you're in the dream time And when you're in the dream time, these other beings do appear. And then when you're really practiced in dream time, you can start to lift out of your body. And I do think that's a real practice where you you can feel, I felt myself going through a wall. You feel the density of the wall of the ceiling. I've never seen other beings in that lucid out of body state, but I have seen them in the dream time. And there's, it takes practice. This is what we're not taught the practice of Ex- human consciousness. Exactly, but- exactly. We're just numbed out and distracted. I mean, so it, cause it's hard to remember. I mean, I started the other day, we did a, a show on lucid dreaming. I started recording my dreams again and bringing, trying to bring that back into my awareness so I could start like learning from them and, and remembering them more. Mm-hmm. And, and it becomes more interesting and, and, uh, and f- more fun to to sleep and to figure out what what you were dreaming about. And so, do you right. have any techniques on on being able to remember? Because if you can't, I mean, you can't even get messages of them if you don't remember them. So exactly. So my technique. I should go soon, though. I think I have another yeah. program coming. Yeah, in. no problem. But the technique: as soon as you get up, as soon as you wake up, don't even get out of bed. Write the dream down. Write what happened to you. Write down right there, right away. Yeah. Don't even question it. It's just like. Whatever's coming, you write it down. Don't interpret it. Write it all out. And then you'll start to enter the lucid state. Oh, I think I'm entering it now on my screen. It looks kind of lucid. I'm like, yeah, I'm you look like uh, Obi-Wan on the. Uh, yeah, on I the... think I am. I'm entering a lucid state. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys. This has been fun. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll put your uh, show notes or we'll put the book in the show notes and, uh, yeah. yeah. Thanks for, for uh, making contact on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. Right okay. on buddy. Yeah. This has been okay. a blast. Okay. Great. I'm okay. starting to disappear. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Guys. Okay. Bye. Aaron Graham. Thanks for doing what you're doing. Awesome. See you, see, ya. see you guys soon. See ya. Let's, and don't start and don't forget to start making contact. That's right. We will. Okay. Get it on Amazon. Out, make on. Out, make on. Be with you. See you. <laughs> Bye. See ya. Okay. Ciao. Ciao. Thanks, guys. And that was a chat with uh, Alan Steinfeld. What'd you think, buddy? Oh, yeah. That was quite the ride. Yeah, I like it. 
I think you I think you resonated with that more than you probably thought. I mean, I was thinking about you when I read the book because he had this sci-fi uh, love for sci-fi. And, and I thought, you know, Darren, Darren, he loves the sci-fi. He's listening to all these books. He would he'd be into all this. He'd be into making contact. Think you so? know? I think you're I think you're going to come around because no. when guys like him, when they when they put together these books with all these People that have been looking at this for decades. I mean, they've been researching it for decades. They've been making contact for decades. There's something there. There's something there. They're downloading. They're channeling. They're making contact. They're, you know, I don't feel the need to, like, to get tied up in it, honestly. Yeah. I just feel like yeah. it's, it would be a distraction, Yeah, honestly, in some ways. Yeah. No, I, I get that. I'm not yeah. ruling it no, out. No, no, no. I, like, I get that. I just that, feel but, like I have a direct conduit. Yeah. No, no. And, and I appreciate that. But I just feel like from, from your interest in a sci-fi perspective, if you if you experience something that would enable you to just Well, say, I think there's a chance that all that sci-fi could be causing the problem. Yeah. All those, yeah, you know, exactly. like that's my... Yeah, that could be the what they're... I mean, you, how you, we've heard about these authors. They start toll-playing their characters and they're, they're, they're writing these stories and the stories are coming true or they're actually like creating it as they go along. I mean, maybe that's what you're saying, right? The sci-fi yeah, like, is like, like maybe the people came before the gods. Yeah, my dad always used to say, if you can imagine it, it it's can like happen. The chicken, I'm, t- I'm 100% a believer in that. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing that like 99% of people don't get, yeah. is that if you can, and it really is that thing, you can do whatever you want, you can be whatever you want to be. It's not yeah. going to be easy, but you can get there if you want to get there. Yeah. So there's... You know, the the people, it's like the chicken and the egg, but the people came before the gods and the gods don't exist until they get worshiped. Worship. So yeah. in that sense, the gods are dependent on your belief to yeah. exist. Yeah, yeah. Which could be the same with aliens. Yeah. Which is scary and from a technological aspect because of the, you know, we talked about the, the zombie apocalypse. I mean, that's they're manifesting gods of, you know, AI or whatever. That's funny. That's kind of like uh, what American Gods talks about. That book talks it's about. Yeah, I was just Neil in the Gaiman. middle. I was, uh, I was reading that when you were. I was. I saw you post about it, and I was like, I'm in it because I had it in my library. I'm like, yeah. I'm going to start listening to it now, and I just I had to put it off for a bit uh, to go for the show books for the show like this one and stuff. But it sounded pretty. It started off pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a good one. But it gets into the AI stuff, or well, it talks about those being the new gods, internet. Wow. More internet and TV and stuff like that. But who knows? I mean, Tulpa, Bigfoot. There's no Bigfoot, though, so maybe it doesn't work. Or Godzilla. Oh, my God. You think we'd have Tulpa to Godzilla by now? The Titans are real, dude. Godzilla. I mean, they just call these things Titans, but Titans have been around for thousands of years. Like That's Pacific the big Grimm style? Yeah, they call them Titans, but I mean... You know, there's legends of Titans. David, yeah. Dave Matheson would say that's just the stars, buddy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Big thanks to Alan for coming on the show. Big thanks to you guys for listening. Even bigger thanks if you're one of the few people, the one in a hundred, decides to support this podcast. It is uh, comes off as a free show because there's like 500 episodes there for free. But it's technically a value for value show. If you listen to it, you like it, you know, decide what it's worth to you. Ten cents or so, fifty cents a show, a buck, two bucks, three really bucks, can't do price of you. a coffee. Yeah. We can't do none of it without you. We just had to buy a new mixer, you know, there's another few hundred bucks. It's always something breaking or needs growing or replacing. America.ca slash support. If you can sign up for monthly, keep supporting what we're doing over here. If you like it, if you think it's valuable, America.ca slash support. Uh, sign up for a monthly if you can. Do a one-time donation. Whatever floats your boat. Uh, head over to contact at com if you want to get on some contact. If you want to get some contact in. A few events coming up. We just did the Utah event. Heading down to Washington to meet up with Randall Carlson and the boys here in a couple of days. Um, and then we got new events coming up. So we got... Contact at the Canyons coming up next April 2022. There's only a couple spots left for that already. We got Magic on the Mountain in Arizona coming up February 10th to 13th in Pine Top, Arizona. Check that out. Contact at the cabin.com slash magic. That one's with uh, Joe Roop, Owen Hunt. Brandon Powell. Yep. 
And then, uh, of course, the other one's Dave Matheson and Brandon Powell, the one in April. And then just today, uh, we launched another Randall Carlson uh, one we're going to do in the Scabland, September 20th to 25th, 2021, which is technically the next one, I guess. If you want to check that out, head over to contactatthecabin.com slash Carlson. If you just go to contactatthecabin.com, all the events are there. You can navigate through them. Uh, what else? Spamgram. Adultbrain.com. Adultbrain.com if you want to get on those audio books. .ca. 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 was not available. Oh, wow. .ca oh. was. Adultbrain.ca if you want to get on the audio books, Graham Reads. Uh, GrahamericaOutlaw.ca if you want to check out our other podcast. Rockfin.com if you want to see our video stuff. Spamgram. Be kind to each other. Join the chats. GrahamAmerica.ca slash chats. Love you, motherfuckers. Thanks for listening. And we will see you next week. Who's gonna kill this sacred cow? You were never political, anyhow. Since when did you start trusting in the government? Since when was it okay to ridicule and shame your neighbor? Your opinions have become. Your opinions have become as fickle as artificial flavors. What matters most to you? What the TV host told you to do? Or a moral compass that points true north or true? Who's gonna kill this sacred cow? You were never religious anyhow. Since when did you kiss? The ring on the hand of the Pope Since when do we need Pharmaceuticals to cope Your soul has become Ever-loving soul has become As brittle as communion wafers What matters most to you What the Holy Ghost told you to do Or a moral compass that Points true north Oh true I'm gonna kill I'm gonna kill this sacred cow Bureaucrats think I'm non-essential anyhow Since when has our culture become so lowbrow? It's all touchscreens And nobody has any know-how Your idea of fun Your idea of fun Is taking a thousand and one photos of your duck face Matters most to you What the celebrities most told you was cool Or a moral compass that points true Oh, true. I'm gonna kill this sacred cow. I'm gonna kill your sacred cow. I'm gonna kill your sacred cow. I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill your sacred cow. I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill your sacred cow. I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill your sacred cow. I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill your sacred cow. I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill.
America.ca slash support. Crimeamerica.ca slash support. Oh, fee, fi, fiddly, I, oh, and tell them Felix sent you there.